Hello, and thank you for joining me here today on this channel, where I, Ryan, shall learn 20 German words that apparently I already know, because I use them all the time. Apparently. What? Bratwurst? I don't know. Um, Audi? All right, let's go. Ad Adidas? You have definitely used these words. I don't think brands count as words. Words before in English, maybe even on a daily basis, but did you know that they're actually German? Why is that blurred out? What's going on? This Hello. is, um, this is Feely from Germany, by the way. Great channel. Go check them out. Actually, why am I not subscribed? Servus and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio off and on since 2016. What? I didn't know so that. a few weeks ago, I made a video about 20 English words that we use in German. And a lot of them actually have a completely different meaning in German than they do in English, like old timer, just to give one example, which refers Old timer? First to an old person in English, but to German speakers, an old timer is a vintage car. Check out the video to find out about the other 19 English. I guess there's nothing in the word old timer that specifies a person. So I, okay, that's interesting. Words that we use differently in German. But today I'll talk about the opposite basically. So about German words that are used in English. There aren't nearly as many German words in English as there are English words in German, but there are actually more than you would think. And a lot of them are words that people use all the time, but they don't really know that it's a German word. And even I wasn't really aware of how many German words are used in English. Mm -hmm. So for me, cool. it was super surprising every time I first heard someone use one of those words. Like they're just saying something right. in English and suddenly I'm like, wait, wait, what? You just spoke German? So for today's video, I made a list of 20 German words. So I do know some German. That are used in English. And I just picked the ones that are either used a lot or that I just thought were funny or interesting. But before we start with the list, I'd like to introduce today's sponsor, Skillshare. Oh, which is go an check out her video for the sponsoring with stuff. New challenges <laughs> and all of this uncertainty. In times like these, when we're all struggling, taking a journaling or a painting, I face how I can prioritize that. So if you're interested, file. There we Let's go. Start with one. Kindergarten of the most known ones and that is kinder i didn't know that in german we pronounce it kindergarten kindergarten and it literally means children's garden and even though the word is oh. used in a very similar way in the two languages it's not 100 the same in well i will say i watched some video about the german school system and it seemed like they were calling kindergarten like um some i don't know it was more of a uh, it wasn't just the first grade in in primary school, which is what it is here. No, it's before the first grade. Germany, kindergarten isn't part of the school system, but it's more like a daycare. Kids can go there from uh... the age of three up until they start first grade, but it's not mandatory for parents to send their kids to kindergarten, and there is no mandatory curriculum either. Some kids may practice math. And so it's very similar to preschool here in America. Preschool would be before kindergarten. Interesting. Writing in kindergarten, but it's not a class setting and the focus is usually more on playing and activity. I mean, to be honest, that's what kindergarten is here too. It's like doing there's not crafts. Much, there's not a whole lot of, I mean, I guess there's learning, but it's in a fun way. Singing together, going on field trips and those kind of things. While in the US, kindergarten is the year before first grade and it's part of the school system. That's yeah. why it's also called K to 12, kindergarten to 12th grade. So the kindergartens usually belong to a school and are a little more focused on academics. So same words, but different meaning in Germany awesome. and the US. And what I find funny is that the German concept of kindergarten is what Americans also call preschool sometimes, while Vorschule, the literal translation Vorschule. for preschool in German, basically stands for the American concept of kindergarten. So it's somewhat switched. Some German kindergartens do offer a Vorschule the year before Vorschule. first grade to prepare the kids a little academically. Got it. I don't know this word. Guess, guess who died? 
I actually had no yes, clue that Americans used this German word before I came yes. here and the first time I heard it, it sounded so funny to me. Gesundheit is what we say oh. bless you in German. And, I've never spelled it out. And Americans seem to use it that way too. Especially among younger people, I found that they usually use it in a more funny way, but it can also be just used with a normal tone. The word itself actually just means health in German. So uh. whenever someone sneezes, we wish them health. Ah, wow. Yeah, people say that here just like as an alternative. It's kind of like the funny guy's alternative to bless you. It's like, oh, Gesundheit. I didn't know it was German. That's so obviously German. I don't know how I didn't Just know like that. Kaput. Gesundheit. I didn't know that this word was used in English before Absolutely. I moved to the US. We spell it with two T's in Germany, oh. but we pronounce it the same way. Kaput. Kaput. And it basically <laughs> has the same meaning in both languages. Cool. It means broken, damaged, or destroyed. Mm. As in, my phone is kaput. My handy is kaput. It means like it's done for. Here, like not just, not necessarily just broken, but like, come, it's beyond broken. It's kaput. Or it can also it's mean done. exhausted, as in, I went hiking that for too. eight hours today and I'm so kaput. It nobody would say that though here. I'm so kaput. No, nobody would say that. They, they only use it like for, I don't know. I don't know the, the grammar words super well. Like it's a... They use it for like not proper nouns. Stunden gewandert. Ich bin total kaputt. And just like in German, where we say etwas geht kaputt, you also say something goes kaputt in English. Doppelganger. Another one which I love hearing in English is doppelganger, especially because it seems kind of funny to me that you would use a rather long German word that yeah. even has an umlaut. I mean, okay, in English it's usually written with just an A, but people could also just say look alike or double in English. Why you- I have no idea why people, but it's very common, very common. If you have a doppelganger out there, that's what they're called. Who's doppelganger? I anyway, don't know. I think it's fun, and I think I first found out about this when I watched. I think it's just because it's such a fun word. The American show How I Met Your Mother in English as a teenager, because that's like a whole theme on that show to find all the main characters' doppelgangers. Hmm. Stein. This one I just recently used. Now this. Just in my video on alcohol culture in Germany and the U.S. And I have to say that it still feels kind of weird to me every time I use this word in English or even when I just hear it because it actually has a completely different meaning in German. Bierstein or just Stein in English refers to a beer mug traditionally made out of stoneware but it can also refer to the more modern glass mugs while in German Stein means stone and mm. the beer mug is called Bierkrug. Some of Okay, I, did, I, I didn't know. I Maybe at the deepest recesses of my brain, I knew that word. But I've never used it. A stein? My German viewers actually commented on my alcohol video and told me that in some parts of Rheinland-Pfalz, in the western part of Germany, people also use the word stein when they refer to a liter of something. So they would say, ein stein bier bitte, one liter of beer please. It seems to be a regional thing though, I had never heard about this before and I'm curious if there is any connection to the English use of the word, but I couldn't really find anything about this, so let me know if you know more about it. Spiel. So like when someone goes on a spiel. The next one is wow. Spiel, and even though this has a different meaning than the word does in German, I really like the English meaning because we don't really have a German equivalent for it. In English, ah. Spiel is a kind of speech, especially one that is long and spoken quickly and is intended to persuade the person listening about something. So this mm. is often used in sales situations and for example, you could say something like, oh, they gave me the whole spiel about why their university is- It sounds so German now that I think about it. The best in the country. In spiel. German, Spiel, capitalized, simply means game and Spielen means to play. Oh, it's nothing, it's totally different. Stool? This one. That can mean a couple things in America. It can mean like something you sit on or um, like your uh, your waste product. 
in the toilet. It's not exactly a loan word from the German language, but it does have Germanic origins. And I included it in this list because Stuhl. I personally think that it sounds exactly like the German word Stuhl. But it's actually a so-called false friend because it has a different meaning in the two languages. Stuhl in German is a chair, while Stuhl in English is what we call Hocker in German. Kind it's not that different of a meaning. Kind of similar, but not quite the same thing. Okay. That's interesting. Stuhl. Dachshund. When Americans first used this word with me, I had no... It reminds me of Dachshund, which is a, like a breed of dog, but I don't know. ...what they were talking about because I wasn't familiar with the word. And I also couldn't tell that it was supposed to be a German word with the English pronunciation. But now I know that Dachshund can be used in German as well, but it's actually more common to call the dogs Dacke in German. Literally, this compound word consists of Dax, badger, and hunt dog okay that makes sense and i was a little confused because i thought it was pronounced or spelled with a h-o-u-n-d like a dosh hound and that's how i pronounce it maybe i'm just completely i think that's how most americans pronounce it a dosh hound a badger dog basically and this is because the dogs were traditionally supposed to crawl into burrows and look for badgers <laughs> Wiener. In English, this can also be used to describe a Dachshund, Wiener dog, but it can also refer to just a Wiener sausage, or it's also often used instead of penis. <laughs> yeah. In German, we say Wiener, the German W is pronounced Wiener. like an English V, and it usually refers to the sausage, Wiener Würstchen would be the long version. It can also refer to a Wiener Schnitzel, which is also something to eat, or it can simply be used for a person from the Austrian city of Vienna, which is Wien in German. Oh, really? You call them Wien <laughs> Wieners? Oh my God, that's funny. Um, I never, of course that's a German word. I never thought about that. Wanderlust. Wanderlust. This is kind of an old fashioned uh, rare word. word that we pronounce Wanderlust, and it's literally the desire to wander. So it Wanderlust. means you want to travel. The word was used a lot in the literature of the Romantic era, but you can also call this Reiselust or Fernweh in German, which the last one is also an interesting word because it's kind of like the opposite of Fernweh. Heimweh, which is homesickness. So Fernweh pretty much means far sickness. Heimweh. Angst. Oh, wow. That's a German word, huh? Angst. Do you say angst? This one is very similar to the German one, but it's not 100% the same. Angst, capitalized in German and with the German A, basically just means fear. And angst in English is also related to fear, but More anxiety. it describes a broader feeling of anxiety and apprehension. It's often used in connection with teenagers. Teenage angst is what a lot of- But you guys pronounce it angst as well. Okay. ...young people experience throughout puberty. And you can also say you're feeling- That would be the most um, common usage of the word, teenage angst. Feeling angsty in English. I don't know why. So but... in English, it describes more of a general feeling, whereas in German, Angst haben means to be scared of something, and that's usually Angst something haben. a little more specific, like you're scared of the spider. The English meaning of angst doesn't have a good translation in German, but it could be translated with something like Existenzangst or innere Unruhe or Angstzustände. Hmm. Kitsch. I don't know this. Kit. Kitsch. Kitsch. <laughs> Kitsch is a concept that's really hard to explain, actually, but according to the dictionary, it describes art, decorative objects, or design considered by many people to be ugly, without style, or false, but enjoyed by many other people, often because they are funny. So you could say, what? his home is full of 1950s kitsch. It means the same thing in German and in English, and it's also pronounced the same. There's also the English adjective kitschy, which is kitschig in German. Kitschig. Blitzkrieg, Blitzkrieg, of course. This is a military term. That's a very famous, like all the kids are taught in school, including myself when I was in school, you know, about Blitzkrieg, you know, the that German tactic to, to move in very quickly, distract, and then move in very quickly 
and overwhelm the defense. And describes a strategy of warfare that includes short and fast attacks. The term is often used in connection with World War II, but it actually had been used way before that. We pronounce it pretty cool word in German, and it literally Blitz translates to good. lightning war because Blitz is lightning and That's peak cool. is war. It's lightning used the same war. way in both languages, and they even adapted the word Blitz as a tactic in American football. Yes. <laughs> yes. This seems to be a very popular word in the US. I've been asked about this so many times. Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. And what makes it so special that. is that this concept doesn't even really exist in the English language, which is why there isn't an English word to describe it, which is probably... I feel like that's the case for a lot of German words, mostly because German words are... There's a lot of ridiculously long German words that mean, like, entire books. Like, you summed up the whole book in one word. Quite a strong statement about the German culture. Schadenfreude consists of Schaden, which means damage or harm, and Freude, which means joy. So this is the joy that you feel when someone else gets harmed or fails. So That's horrible. very nice. <laughs> Fußball. I love Fußball. All sports fans should know this one. Fußball in German means soccer or football in Britain. But here it's like a tabletop game. British English, Fußball in English refers to the <laughs> bar game, which we usually call Kicker or Kicker. Tischfußball in German. <laughs> Zeitgeist. This is ah. another concept that doesn't have its own English translation, just like Schadenfreude, and therefore the German word is used in English and some other languages too. I don't, that's kind of a hard word to, for me to... I don't know if I know exactly what it is, but I think it's like the hive mind, like the zeitgeist. It's like what the the conventional thought. Americans or... usually say zeitgeist. In German, we pronounce it zeitgeist. And zeitgeist. this consists of the word zeit, which means time, and geist, which means spirit. So zeitgeist huh. is the spirit of the time, which describes what's going on culturally, religiously, and intellectually during a certain time period. Woodstock was oh. part of the 1960s zeitgeist, for example. Got and it. in English, they even made it an adjective, which we don't even have in German, uh -huh. zeitgeisty. <laughs> Schnapp. I'm gonna be honest, I never heard that. Zeitgeisty. I'm gonna say this. This one Schnapps. I also mentioned in my video on alcohol culture. In German, we spell it like this. Butterscotch schnapps. And say schnapps. And it means hard liquor. In English, it's mostly used as part of the name of certain liquors like peppermint schnapps or peach schnapps. Wunderkind. Wunderkind. Wunderkind in English. Wunderkind. Oh, um... Shoot. Wunderkind in German. I've heard it. And this literally translates to miracle child. Wunder is miracle, uh, yes, kind yes, 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 is yes. child. So it describes a person that is very clever or talented and becomes successful at a young age. One of the most common examples for a Wunderkind is Mozart. Hmm. But we would also call him a prodigy. That would be the typical American word for a Wunderkind. Kin. I can't say it. Wonder kind kind. What did she say? Person that is very clever or talented and becomes successful at a young age. One of the most common examples talent kind this I just want to hear her say it. Peppermint again. schnapps or peach schnapps. Then I'll skip past. Wonderkind in English. Wonderkind. English. Wunderkind in German. Wunderkind. Okay. Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Ah, cool. This looks a little bit similar. Everybody knows what that means. To zeitgeist. Poltern means to clatter, and geist means ghost or spirit. And this particularly <laughs> describes a ghost that makes noises in the house and moves objects. Whether oh, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't know it had to do with the noise it made. Whether you believe in that or not cool. is a different story. <laughs> Schmutz. And last but not least, schmutz. the final word on my list is schmutz. This one is pronounced and used the same way in both languages. Why do I feel like I've heard that, but I don't? Languages, and it means dirt. And schmutzy in English or schmutzig in German means dirty. Dirty. Schmutz. Okay, yes, yes, yes. It's not used very commonly, but I've heard. Dirty. Schmutz. 
So this was my list of 20 German words that are used in English. And there are many, many more, of course, especially regarding food like pretzel, bratwurst or Hefeweizen, just to name a few examples. I still can't believe you guys spell pretzel with a B. Anyway, that was an awesome video. Thank you so much to Feely from Germany. Go check out that channel. Hurrah! Link is in the description. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Subscribe if you want to see me. Just a humble, typical American. Learn more about Germany. <laughs> thank you, regardless, for watching. And have a fantastic day over there. Goodbye.